Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 2. Here are the standings after about 42 games. Lila is first, leading by a half a point ahead of Stockfish, but she's down four games, so there's a lot of chance to, to rebuild the advantage. Lilenstein is third, and Houdini is fourth. Houdini is doing very well in this very strong tournament. I think his contempt value has been uh, changed, uh, has been reduced. So that Houdini is not playing that aggressively anymore and that helps him in this uh, field. Blue Lila, T60, uh, slipped back to 5th, but um, she's um, down a game compared to Houdini. And even though she, she lost one game to Stockfish, she managed to win another one against Stoveflays. And in the last place we have uh, Stoveflays, so this is another proof how strong this tournament is. Stoveflays is a very very strong engine. Alright, so Lila is first and let's see now a game played between her and Houdini. The game started with d4 and we reached the end of the book already. So we get another chance to, to see how they like to play these openings, these positions. And Houdini played here knight f6. A move that Lila also expected. And in the reverse game, Houdini continued with knight f3. And after e6, c4, d5, and knight c3, Lila took on c4. And after e4, we had a, a three knights variation of the queen's gambit declined. And um, the game was eventually drawn. In this one, after knight f6, Lila played c4. And after e6, she played the Catalan with g3. This is one of her favorites openings. And one in which she does very, very well. She has very good results with the Catalan. Houdini now continued with bishop b4 check. And after bishop d2, incommodating the queen, the bishop dropped back to e7. And now we have knight f3, d5. Bishop g2, castles, castles, and now c6. And here black is already threatening to take on c4 and then defend the pawn with b5. So we have queen c2 defending the pawn. And this is the position that Lila envisioned that will happen. This is what she expected for both white and black. We have now b6. Lila expected here knight d7, but in this one we have b6, but this is just another main line in the position and now we have knight e5 bishop b7 pawn takes pawn takes on d5 and now rook c1 already threatening maybe to uh, invade with queen c7 and here black has uh, many options grandmasters played either bishop d6 to guard c7 or played one of the knights to uh, to d7 which is also good but here houdini played a novelty and he played here knight e4 attacking this bishop on b2 so now queen c7 is is not that uh, great for white and taking out this knight is also not very good because now if the pawn takes black gains suddenly the d5 square if uh, before the capture the bishop could only go to c6 or or he could see only the c6 square now if the bishop takes and the pawn takes he can also see the d5 square and maybe he can even go there at some point or maybe uh, black can uh, place a knight there via f6 and d5 or the queen and uh, he can also build pressure against the d4 pawn so taking on e4 is not that great this is not what Lila played she just calmly played here a3 to, to guard the b4 square and now we have f6 chasing this knight back and now this allows knight c6 and now we have e3 defending the pawn rook c8 and knight c3 Houdini now took out the bishop. We have queen takes knight, queen d7, and now b4. And in this position, white has many, many good ideas. He can uh, maybe build up pressure on the c file, maybe even play queen c2 and queen a4. And then when there's enough pressure built up, then he can maybe play b5 and chase the knight away from there and, and try to take over the c file. He can combine these threats also with uh, bishop h3, where e6 is uh, weakened, so white can uh, apply pressure on, on this diagonal also. And uh, uh, this this is one way maybe to, to play. Lila chose another way to play. She played here after bishop d6, rook b1, d5, 
defending this pawn. So her idea is to advance with these pawns and maybe try to, to gain the c5 square. This knight would love to jump into c5. We have now knight e7, anticipating maybe a b5. a4, and now knight f5. And Houdini wants to, to transfer this knight to c4 now. We have a5, but Houdini maintains a pawn on b6, so that uh, c5 is covered. We have rook c7, and now queen b2. The queen is defending the b-pawn, and this allows the b1 rook to defend the rook on c1 if, uh, if needed. For example, if Lila moves away the knight. We have bishop e7, and now b5. And now that the b6-pawn is uh, blocked, Lila wants to take on b6 and then attack that pawn with the knight. And she was expecting here knight d6 and then after pawn takes, pawn takes and knight a4 attacking b6. This knight can now go to c4 and defend. But instead of uh, this idea, Houdini preferred rook c8. And this is also good because after pawn takes, pawn takes and knight a4, Houdini now could exchange the rooks and then play knight d6 and instead of defending the b6 pawn he would counter attack the pawn on b5 and after queen takes on b5 black is completely fine here in this position but instead of a takes on b6 now now that this rook is um, on c8 and uh, this bishop can go there lila played a6 here forcing the bishop into the corner and this bishop is now not very happy because he doesn't have squares to go to and this might not be a problem at this point when there are still so many pieces on the board, but if they get into an ending, then uh, black could be easily playing without a piece here. Lila evaluates this position now at plus 0 0.6, but Houdini says that this is actually better for black because uh, he can play moves like knight d6 and apply pressure on b5 and he also has pressure on the c5. So let's see who's right. We have now knight d2. And now after knight d6, Lila exchanges one of, uh, one of the rooks. And now she played knight f4. e6 is a weakness in black's camp, so maybe she wants bishop h3 and then uh, take this pawn. But before bishop h3, black now played g5 here, forcing the knight away. And now after knight h5, the knight is uh, aggressively placed, but the knight is pretty much away from the center and from the queen side. And this now allowed Houdini to play queen c8 and uh, try to invade into white's position and uh, put pressure on, uh, on these points. We have bishop f1 defending the knight but also b5. We have rook c2 and this looks quite dangerous for black but Lila has here a trick. Rook c1 counterattacking this queen on c8 and making use of the fact that this uh, rook is pinned. Now, if the rook takes here, then after queen takes, they will also exchange the queens, or Lila will be able to maintain the queen on the c file. Houdini preferred to, to take the queen, but now we have rook takes with check, knight takes, and knight takes on b2. And we have suddenly an endgame. And what is Houdini's plans here? Because this bishop is still trapped. We have king f7, and now knight d1, bishop b4, and now bishop d3 attacking this pawn on h7, so uh, Houdini played here knight d6 to attack b5, king f1, bishop a3, and uh, now f4. So this is Lila's plan. She wants to uh, play knight f2, knight g4, and then attack f6. Now, if instead of bishop a3 here, actually, black plays knight e4, forgot to mention this, then white must not take this knight, because then uh, black could take here and d5 would suddenly be available for this bishop. So this would be a terrible idea. Instead, we have here of the bishop a3 f4. And Lila evaluates this at plus 1 for white. We have pawn takes and now knight takes on f4. e5. And again, taking this pawn would be a terrible idea. Because now after the knight moves away, black could play d4 and liberate his bishop so instead we have knight g2 just keeping a pawn on d4 and uh, blocking the d5 pawn 
we have king e6 and now g4 but after f5 lila is now happy to exchange another pair of pieces we have knight takes pawn takes king takes and now she played knight f2 preventing this king from uh, getting close to the e3 pawn we have bishop d6 knight h4 check king e6 and now king g2 pawn takes pawn takes king f6 and now knight d3 and this knight is beautifully placed on d3 it prevents this bishop to get to b4 or b2 and uh, attack this pawn also f4 is covered now the only way to attack that pawn on d4 is to to do something like this but for now the king is in the way we have h5 and at this point lila evaluates this at already at plus two so pretty much winning for white and rightly so since uh, this bishop is not playing we have now h3 saving this pawn and uh, allowing this king to uh, get active we have king g5 and now knight f3 check and after king f5 now this is threatened attacking this pawn so we have knight d2 bishop e7 king f3 bishop f6 attacking this pawn but now knight b3 conveniently defends the pawn and now lila's plan is quite simply to come with the king to e3 to defend d4 and prevent the king from entering to e4 and then use her knights to, to win material the pawn on h5 or if black is not careful then maybe one of those knights could get to c7 and uh, and win this bishop so houdini has to be careful here we have bishop e7 and now knight f4 h4 and now knight g2 keeping this pawn attacked bishop f6 and uh, now king e3 and this is now completely winning for white the b3 knight can now go and uh, and pick up the pawn on h5 if houdini plays something like bishop e7 maintaining a defense on that pawn well after knight f3 the king can't come closer to help and this pawn would be lost and um, if instead the king would go let's say to h5 to uh, to defend the pawn like this then after knight f4 check let's say black plays something after knight f4 check and uh, king up this knight now gets loose and can go to c7 and pick up this bishop after bishop d6 defending black loses again this pawn on h5 so there's nothing houdini can do here now unfortunately for him he played king e6 with the idea of coming here and then uh, sacrificing the bishop for for these two pawns and uh, liberate her uh, her own pawns and uh, try to promote them we have now knight d2 king d6 knight f3 and now bishop c6 sacrificing the bishop we have pawn takes king takes and now knight takes on h5 unfortunately for houdini his uh, his pawns are just too slow we have now king b5 knight f5 bishop a8 king d3 king takes h4 b5 h5 b4 h6 and now king b5 but lila plays king c2 and uh, she's in time to to stop those pawns we have a5 now knight e5 bishop f6 and now h7 of course this bishop can't uh, capture anything because uh, then harry promotes we have king a4 and now after king b2 and b3 lila played knight e3 she's attacking this pawn and um, she, she will win that we have bishop g7 and now knight takes on d5 bishop a8 and now knight c6 attacking this pawn we have king b5 and now lila takes the pawn on a5 her idea is to give up the knight for these two pawns and then win the game with uh, the remaining d and um, h7 pawns there are many other ways to win here but obviously lila chose the most difficult one but it doesn't matter as long as it as it wins here after um, knight takes on e5 and king takes on b5 white wins after taking here on b3 but it's not so easy because now the bishop can take on d5 and the bishop can sack itself for the pawn and then uh, white can't really win with only the king and the knight so white really needs to know how to win this ending and it's quite instructive the way to do this is to first attack this bishop and the bishop moves away he maintains itself on its di on this diagonal and then play knight f4 
and after the bishop moves something get closer to the with the king to d5 and after bishop h8 here comes the trick knight h5 and now after the bishop moves again the king comes even closer and now white threatens to block the diagonal with the knight and promote this pawn and uh, these two squares are covered so the bishop pretty much has to go to h8 but now after king f7 white is threatening knight g7 and then is threatening to win the bishop with king g8 and then promote the pawn and if the bishop moves away of course then knight g7 again and uh, the pawn promotes again so this is the way to win but this is not what happened in the game because instead of taking the knight Houdini played king a4 but he can't uh, save the pawn of course because uh, the knight can uh, take it and now we have king b5 knight f4 king a4 knight g6 attacking the bishop and the rest really doesn't require much uh, commentary so let's just watch the end of it now of course pushing this pawn in promoting harry and winning the bishop would be enough to win the game and then promoting the d-pawn but Lila uh, wants to promote the d-pawn first. We have now uh, knight d7. And uh, the king is approaching and is helping soon the pawn to, to go up. And we have now a new queen. And then Lila gives up a knight. And she promotes to a bishop. She didn't promote to a bishop for a long time now. So she wanted to have one. She gives up another knight. And now gives a check. And wins the bishop and then gives up the bishop in order to get into this familiar ending that she knows very well and then the mate follows very very soon another very very nice game by Leela this is one of the ways in which uh, she likes to, to win games by immobilizing one of the enemy pieces and then uh, going to a, a winning endgame she did uh, this type of thing already with rooks now she did it to a bishop. A very, very interesting game. I would like to thank to Leon Coleman for his uh, $5 contribution to my channel. And of course, I would also like to thank to Rene, Adolf, Barry, Mark, and all the other guys who donated to my channel. Visit my store. We all need t shirts, mugs, and so on. So pay a visit. Check out two of my other games on the right. Please subscribe, like, and share. And thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.